I'm Jose Otero, this is Jonathan Dornbush. Hello. And we just came back from the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild panel at the Game Developers Conference here in San Francisco. And we want to tell you three highlights. So the first one, prototypes. Nintendo actually yes. showed up with some really, really cool stuff. It was, it was awesome. There was a 2D prototype that they used while uh, making Breath of the Wild to really test out like sort of how the gameplay would work in the full 3D game. But it was a 2D game that looked in the style of the original NES Legend of Zelda. Yep. And they showed it at first and kind of teased this was going to become important later in the panel. And I loved how it was the game you knew, but with a twist. Yeah, and it was just a way that they were trying to demonstrate the logic of like, hey, we want fire to have certain properties. We yeah. want arrows to be able to grab fire and then have certain other uh, effects on the world and just have that interaction between Link and the environment. And yeah. it ended up proving really well because that is ultimately what ended up being in the game. Yes. Um, yeah. But we rarely see that kind of you know, thing from Nintendo. Nintendo doesn't show prototypes. No, like, no, it's crazy. I love that inside look, especially when it's so unique and a different approach than I would assume many game makers take, especially because that his, the history of that franchise runs for 30 years. Yep. They could easily pull back there. I want that prototype. Please make that available. Yeah, yeah. If that you guys thing released awesome. that, like everyone would pick I that up. It. Like they yes. pay a heavy price. Um, but then uh, they also showed some uh, some concepts and yes. things that yeah. had not been shown before. One called. Hyrule Wars, another that involved a, a space invasion. And they showed, of course, different art concepts yes. for Breath of the Wild. Uh, yeah, I love this look. Again, at all the iterations they did before they got to Breath of the Wild's art style. Uh, Hyrule Wars was more, it looked sort of like more medieval, battle, Game of thrones if sort of thing. Imagine. Or, that would be, I, they could still make it. Uh, whereas the Legend of Zelda invasion, all they showed was just a giant spaceship in the sky while Link was on the ground. Yeah. And uh, I also and a manga game. where Ganon's wearing a Metallica t-shirt. Yeah. Not strange, um, but, but, but that was ultimately great. That, that, yeah. that, that, it's kind of interesting where the inspiration for ideas come from and yes. how you do try to sort of pull in things from the real world or things that you wouldn't normally associate with Zelda. I mean, yeah. I feel like yeah. with any game, that's sort of the smarter way to go. Yeah, I love seeing how varied these original ideas were. They also showed off different links, and there was one where he was a Metroid-style link. Oh, yeah. They showed Biker Link. Like, they showed all these different versions. I love that they just went wild. No pun intended. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's right, and just that's right. and and just tried all these different ideas yep. before what they settled on. Yep. And Nintendo said Metroid two times this week. Once yes. in the Nindy Showcase and second at this thing. Uh, so the the message is clear. But <laughs> finally, um, the other interesting thing was yeah. just finally seeing something that A.G. Anuma, the producer for Zelda, has talked about for a long time. In that, uh, basically, Nintendo, you know, with building games on the Wii U, took the last three Zeldas and put them into HD. Two were released, actually, right? Like, they were two projects that shipped with Wind Waker HD and with Twilight Princess. But we actually even got to see Skyward Sword yes. with an HD look on it, which was very brief, was but awesome. still, like, yeah. wait a second. Like, holy cow, like, you guys went and did that. But that led to a very interesting piece of information in that Wind Waker was a very big inspiration for Breath of the Wild's art style. Yes, yeah, they talked about sort of how there was a point when they were making Wind Waker HD towards the end of it and the beginning of Breath of the Wild's art design when they looked at one image, I don't think they said which image it was or which part of the game, but they said, hey, this is what we should do for Breath of the Wild. And it was a mix of that beautiful, cel-shaded, colorful world that is uh, Wind Waker, but also with something a little more realistic they were yeah. trying to go for, they said. Yeah. And as a bonus, they included an email from Anuma saying, hey, and you've got to ship it on Switch. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, which was that. a very cute nod, but yeah. to the reality of the situation was that Breath of the Wild became a Wii U game and a Switch game and them talking about this portability and how much easier it was to sort of bring it to the platform, taking yeah. that moment to kind of say, this was really easy to throw together and we didn't even do optimization at that point. Yeah, they kind of talked about how easy both that was and even like the art design, they said the Wind Waker to Breath of the Wild discussion was maybe a minute in the office and pretty yeah, much everyone yeah. unanimously agreed, this is what we should do. And yeah. that, that's awesome. While well, Breath of the Wild's yeah. almost here, you don't have much longer to wait. Make sure you check back at IGN. Uh, March 2nd after 3 a.m. Pacific time, which just come back March 2nd when, <laughs> when you're awake, and you'll find the review. And for everything Zelda and Nintendo, you're already at the right place at IGN.